today's daily rehab is about trying to get back to strengthening following a tennis elbow injury. So meaning a lateral epicondylitis or a tear, an actual common tendon. So a very common injury and it's really hard to get rid of. It takes months and months and months to recover. And the important thing is doing the strengthening in the right way at the right time. So this, these exercises are after you've had physio treatment and release treatment and all that sort of thing on the tendon. It's recovering a bit, but it needs that eccentric strengthening. So it's after you do the eccentric wrist curls, it's how to get back into the gym. So, first thing I might get to doing is doing eccentric work, but trying to do normal arm and shoulder work, but doing it eccentrically and without a grip. The trick is not gripping for your first few weeks, even up to the first few months, of going back to doing gym and training work. Because the more you grip, using these flexes, the more you're going to use the extensors, and that's going to load it up. And the biggest problem about this is there's too much work in the extensors or too much gripping. So if you go back to too much gripping, it's just going to recur again. So what we try and do is put force through the elbow, okay, so a little bit of work through the extensors, but a lot of movement through the elbow, okay, and a little bit through the wrist to try and get muscle work around that to try and slowly build up some base strength. That's the important part. Getting that base strength of the elbow and then focusing on more and more grip, which will come in a minute. So, first exercise is doing a bicep curl, but eccentrically. So I like using a band. Then you can use a dumbbell if you want. But the bicep, instead of pulling up, okay, so don't pull up, what I want you working on is lifting it up with the other hand and then eccentrically lowering. Now you may feel like you're not doing too much here. That's the idea. Okay, we don't want too much work being done around the common origin here. We want a little bit of work. So the trick is don't grip it. So if I grip that and try and do that movement there, I'm gonna load it up here. And that's how we cause it. So I'm gonna ungrip. And so therefore I've got the band, you can see I've wrapped it around my hands quite a lot, so it's not gonna fall off. Okay, so from there, I can then do a bicep curl with my palm open. So we call these palm open exercises. And this slowly works on a bit of base strength. And it gets you back doing some work. It gets you back doing some bicep work, a little bit of brachioradialis, a little bit of brachialis work, which all helps your strength around the elbow. Now, one of the main causes of tennis elbow is a lack of shoulder posture and shoulder stability up here. So when you're doing this, you've got to make sure your shoulders are not fully back, but in that nice, wide, neutral position, and so they're not rounded. So in this position, and then you do your bicep curl like that. So this load, one, can't be too heavy, okay? otherwise you're gonna load up here, but two, can't be too heavy because it's gonna, you're gonna lose your posture. So that's your first one. Second one, you can try and do a tricep. So same sort of deal. Now, you can use a band or get something like this, which has got some handles on it. Throw it over here, okay? Now the same thing, you can do eccentric as well, okay? So you can get into here and pull down into this position and then let it come back. Now, if you notice, I've got to make sure I don't grip. Okay, so don't grip and pull down because that's going to wind you up again. So sometimes people might like to put their hand through so it's just on the wrist there. Okay, so you pull down and all you've got to do is try and control that backwards. Now, if that doesn't work for you, then try and, again, same sort of drill. You might have to get quite a heavy band to do this. Okay, again, wrap it around so it's not going to move. There's your open palm, to here, down, but when I put it down, I pull down that way, so there's minimal load, and then slowly back. Okay, again, not gripping, making sure shoulders in the right position, pull down, and slowly back. Okay, so there's your tricep one. Now, next thing you can try and work on is low. So, this one here, now this is the killer. If you grip here and pull through, I'm gonna wind it up, okay? So again, if I put my hands through, in this position here, okay, I've hardly got a closed grip. And I can pull down, and here we go here. Let that tension go, so I've got bicep, back the shoulder, okay? A little bit of forearm, there's a tiny bit going on there. Slowly return that back. Okay, so pull it back, hold it there, Open palm, there it is. And pull back. And again, I'm working on all my shoulder muscles again, which is important. 
to help with my shoulder posture to fix the, you know, the original problem, the first change, which is the proximal issue up here causing a distal issue down here, right? So again, crucial that you don't grip, but very important that you get those normal movement patterns like row, bicycle, push down, press work, we're gonna do a press up in a minute. Um, those normal movement patterns are very important in trying to get your function back in the wrist, not just the strength of the neck sensors. Now, when you start improving, with all these biases you've been trying down the track, your physio allows you, you can start closing your grip. So you might start with a half grip and do all those exercises again. Then you slowly grow, close your grip to a full grip, and then once you've got a full grip, weeks down the track, when that's strengthened up and it can handle more load, then you put heavier load in. You might go to buy you know, dumbbells and presses and things like that, where you have to grip harder because the weight in your hand is heavier. Right, so that's important. Um, so you can do press up work. So the, all the pulling stuff is when you, the big problem is when you grip. So that's when you're doing lifting and pulling. But if you're pressing, you don't have to grip. So I recommend that you start doing, you know, doing the push ups and things, because again, it's elbow work. You do use the extensors and flexors in that position, but just not as much as a grip. So you're using a low load, which will help you build that base. So you know, and just start off push ups on your knees, piece of cake, okay? Just down into here. Make sure you get your elbow in the right position, okay? So once your elbow facing forward, as in the middle of the elbow facing forward, in that position, don't go too wide, okay? Down in that position and back, okay? So do your press work. Now, we talked about the shoulder posture and the shoulder strength before. So while you're working on getting the forearm going, work on the shoulder as well. So that's when you go back to my old favorite, which is the external rotation. Okay, because let's face it, the most important rotator cuff muscle is your infraspinatus, so let's work on that. This one here, okay, in this position, again, if you watch, I've got a grip on, I'm not allowed to grip, so open palm, all right, work on your external rotation. It's a bit tricky because you've got to make sure you might want to wrap it around perhaps your thumb and externally rotate through there. So I'm doing my external rotation for here to improve my proximal stability, to improve my elbow, but I'm not gripping. So my extensors, see they're not really too on, there's a little bit of tone there, but it's not, watch this, it's not as much as that, okay? So I've got to let them go. And again, as the weeks go on, I'll close my grip a little bit, so my grip closes, and I do my external rotation, and then when I'm fully strong, I can really grip and external rotate to strengthen that fully. So there's my tips on how to get back to doing normal activity following a tennis elbow injury. Good luck.